Ciao Juventino of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I hope you're all doing well, me personally, bittersweet, that's how I feel today, because it's always like that, the last game of Serie A, the last game of Juventus, Juventus Monza this evening, in a way, I'm super happy, we can finally close the chapter, I'm sure that a lot of you will be happy, we can start fantasy thinking, because it's always like that. What is unknown, what is unwritten, it's beautiful. Because you can dream about it. You can put in your head the best possible scenario. Fantasy lineups, the new shirts, calcio mercato, mercato is crazy, revolution, etc, etc. So it's beautiful. You, we, there is no limit to our dreams. On the other side, well, one thing that is unfortunately a reality is that we will not see our boys anymore on the field after today. Until the month of August, and that's really long, we can't celebrate a victory, we can't celebrate a goal anymore and for me what I care the most about is seeing our boys what playing on the field so I'm always a bit sad saying goodbye it always break my heart this is the reality in today's video we'll speak about the present it means the last one of Paolo Montero with a crazy lineup pay attention really curious three men up front but also thinking already about the future with one that is that close with one that I didn't believe that much but that could become one of Juventus next season, requested by Thiago Motta, and another name that is really surprising, but I tell you, thinking about it, why not? Maximo of like if you didn't yet, please continue to subscribe to the channel. Guys, this morning we reached 29,777, lucky number, beautiful, which means that is beautiful, but we are not there yet at 30,000 Juventini of the world on this channel, I'm counting on you, with a maximum of comment, what you think about the three names, what you think about the lineup of today, don't forget to like the video, don't forget to subscribe, because now we start. I told you about the last game, we'll come back on it. And if the last game that we played in Serie A was against Bologna, or against our potential, possibly, new coach, Thiago Motta, well, today we can play against who can become, potentially, possibly, our new goalkeeper. We are speaking about Michele Di Gregorio, goalkeeper of Monza. MVP, best goalkeeper of Serie A that will play against Juventus today. Of course, we will be curious about the team of Montero, about the players that will play with black and white colors, but also about Di Gregorio, watching him closely. It's a goalkeeper that I personally really like. I told you a lot of time here on the channel. Italian, still young, has a lot of years in front of him. He grew up a lot, improved a lot. A goalkeeper that I really see at Juventus, not sure yet as a first or not. 18, 20 million euro is the request price by Monza, which Juventus would want to invest. Not that much in terms of salary, because he could go potentially to a 2 million euro salary. But these are not the big questions that Juventini are asking themselves. I don't know if there are a lot of people that are doubting about the qualities of Di Gregorio. The big question is, who is leaving? And here you have a big split between, on one part, the sources that are saying Perin. On the other side, you have sources that are saying Chesney. Why situation one? Why situation two? Perin, for one reason. It has been a really long season for Mattia Perin that we know his quality and he wants to play more. A really long season with not that much of rotation. Only Coppa Italia was played by him, plus two games of Serie A. He wants to play. And it's totally logic. I understand uh, Perin. Absolutely, I understand Perin that wants to play more because he has quality. He knows that he's going towards the end of his career. And I would not be pissed off if Perrin leaves. Of course, sad, because I know the qualities of goalkeeper number two of Juventus. On the other side, you have a Chesney that is not intentioned to leave Juventus. He wants to stay at Juventus. Of course, you have a contract, one year. And Juventus is doubting not that much about the qualities, the leadership, the men, because Chesney is fantastic and he can still give a lot to Juve. But about the salary that is really high with one more year only. If Chesney is not that much accepting the role of extending the contract to become what Buffon was for him, means a bridge goalkeeper, number one, for the second one, and then in that second year, means 25-26, become the rotational goalkeeper to still be there as a leader, a mentor for the new one that could potentially be Di Gregorio, well, it be, will be difficult. If an offer arrives for Chesney, not even that much, Chesney could potentially leave. It will be difficult to receive an offer because Chesney has indeed a really high salary, which is complicated to find another team. So we will monitor that situation if you want to in the comment section. Let me know who you would let go, Perrin or Chesney, because now we go to the crazy lineup of today. Today that Perrin will play in the goal and probably we will see at the end of the game Pinsolio entering. 
something that didn't happen last season so I really hope to see uh, Pinsolio in the last few minutes of the game three men in defense Danilo Rugani that just uh, renewed his um, his contract until 2026 Alexandro on the left where Alcaraz, Fagioli, Inning Jr. Up front, Chies on the right, Milik at the center, and Yildiz on the left. Crazy lineup. Crazy lineup. A lineup that nobody was even thinking about. What a crazy lineup. 3 4 3. First of all, the formation. 3 4 3 that we were all hoping for and dreaming about. Well, it will happen. And then the men that will play. Mamma mia. The people were saying, where is Rabiot? Rabiot, muscular, small injury. I'm not even sure if he will be called up. Locatelli will not be there, which makes sense. I'm thinking so much pissed off that he's not going to the Euro, that it's better mentally to not have him there. Fajoli from the start is a big curiosity. Alcaraz, that twice when he started, didn't do well. So another chance for Alcaraz, a bit rewarding him for the man that could have been a solution for that second part of the season. Unfortunately, he didn't deliver, so today can be a beautiful gift for him. A way up. And pay attention, we'll come back on Wea because we have fresh news. Confirmation of Willing Jr. that in the last part of the season did really, really well. And then, of course, the trio up front. Not with Vlaovic from the start, but with Yildiz and Chiesa. Pay attention to that because we are all dreaming about. And then, of course, we see the name of Alexandra. Alexandra today probably will go and make a round around the stadium, maybe even with the Coppa Italia. I'm really curious, and I hope that he will receive applause from the supporters. You know what I said it so many times. Even at the peak, Alexandro, in the two first, three first year of Juventus, I've never been a big fan of Alexandro. I think it's probably too late. It should have happened before in saying goodbye to Alexandro, but I'm absolutely not pissed off to Alexandro. What, what is his fault that Beppe Marotta decided to extend him and even increase the salary to really high, six, six, six point five million euro? He has absolutely no responsibility on that. So I'm not pissed off. If I would have been at the same, I would have applauded Alexander, even if he had never been my favorite player, a player that we saw the huge big decline towards the last four, five seasons. But it's nevertheless a player that today playing, he will reach Pavel Nedved. He will not be able to overtake that record, but today he will probably play 300 27 games with Juventus, which are a lot. And for a foreign player, you will have the record. 11 titles in 9 seasons, a player that scored 15 goals. And Alexander that I would have applauded, but I think it was uh, more than time to say goodbye. So hopefully I don't hear any whistle because we don't have to, res to disrespect players that respected Juve. That's important. I told that I would come back on uh, Timothy Weah. If a lot of people were thinking that Timo would leave Juventus at the end of the season, pay attention, write it down, 25th of May, I tell you that there are chances that Wea could receive another opportunity to Juventus of Thiago Motta. One that will certainly not leave is Andrea Cambiaso, yesterday extended officially to 2029, and also Rugani to 2026. I spoke about it in the video of yesterday, where 5,000 people watched. Thank you for that. Really, really appreciate it. Who are the next in line? Of course, we know about Ken and Yildiz, even if everything is already done. We just need to make it official. And then Chiesa. Chiesa needs to be spoken about with the entourage. What will happen about the future of Chiesa? I told you, at today, it's difficult. At today, it's a 50-50. And then Dusan Vlaovic. Also him extending... Much more possibility for Dusan Vlaovic to even continue with Juventus to extend the contract maybe going a bit lower with the salary that he's earning now. And then, of course, an Adrien Rabiot. In the next few days, a meeting is expected between Adrien Rabiot and Juventus. And, of course, of course, the mama, the mama of Adrien Rabiot, uh, Veronique, to discuss his very future. The contract expires in June, we know it, but he's opening the door to stay. And that's a big one. That's a turnaround about what we said in the last few weeks. He's opening the door to stay. Why? Because he knows what competition we will play. And he also knows who will be the next coach. We always said, eh, Adrien Rabiot is a player that loves comfort zone in a way. I'm not even saying comfort zone, but at least security. He doesn't want to take that many risks, changing just for the sake of changing. And then having the security to play under someone that he really knows and consider his big brother can be a really important one and decisive one, especially because Thiago Monta is counting on him. 
But now we are speaking about new faces in that second part of the video. Tutto Sport, Di Gregorio, we already spoke about him, but also another name, and Di Lorenzo for Tiago Motta. The first time I heard about uh, Di Lorenzo, I was like, eh, no, I don't want... And then I said, wait, 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 wait. I need to understand a bit more. First of all, apparently there is a big breakup with uh, De Laurentiis. There are a lot of players from Napoli that are absolutely not happy. You know it. They are not even playing Champions League. I'm not even sure if they will play a European competition. Disaster. Of course, there will be a coach, a new one that we don't know at the moment. Could be Conte. Could be less sure now, but uh, Gasparini. Could be another coach. We don't know. But it will be a tough one. After that year full of emotion where they won the Scudetto and also breaking the record for being the less points contenders defender of that Scudetto where a lot of players they want to leave. Di Lorenzo, I have to admit that I saw him a lot of time with La Nazionale. I watched him, of course, when he was playing at Napoli and when I was watching the games. It's an offensive right back. And we are speaking about right backs that we need to reinforce ourselves. So if you have a possibility there, a player... That is not costing that much because we are speaking about the 10, 15 million euro on the right side for a player that can still give something to Juve. Eh, I would not say no. Eh? I would not say no to Di Lorenzo. Absolutely not. Di Lorenzo, a fullback that can play in that way of playing of Thiago Mota. We saw eh, in that fantastic Thiago, um, in that fantastic Napoli of Spalletti what Di Lorenzo was. But even this season with a disaster, Napoli was not bad. So Di Lorenzo, I would not say no. Let me know if you would love to have him, yes or no. Then Gazzetta dello Sport is not stopping at Di Gregorio and Di Lorenzo, but they are speaking about a new Juve for Motta. Di Gregorio, yes, but also a Zirigse. And Zirigse was a player that I didn't really believe in it that much. But they are saying that the price that I was thinking could have asked by Bologna, 60 million euro, is going towards a 40 million euro. Of course, to play with two tables, Bayern Munich and Bologna. <sighs> Looks like the backstage stories are telling us that Thiago Motta, when he was sure to go to Juve, when he was really sure, he went and he was whispering to the ears of two players, Calafiori and Zirikse. Telling them, guys, you come with me. Guys, you come with me. Or my next destination will be your dex next destination. May I tell you, I don't, I, I, I like it. Look at the lineup. Fantasy lineup. It will be the first one out of million that we have put here on the image. Di Gregorio into the goal. Di Lorenzo on the right side. A double defense with Bremer Calafiori. On the left, Cambiaso that goes towards the role that he was playing with Thiago Motta. Up front, Dusan Vlaovic as a number 9, supported by Yildiz on the left. Zirgse as a number 10. Chiesa on the right side with two big question marks of the midfielders. Go! Go and use your creativity, fill in these two blanks. You will help me a lot because at the moment I have difficulties to understand who can be. It can be uh, Rabiot Locatelli, uh, Fagioli Rabiot, uh, Fagioli Co-Manners. I have absolutely no idea. Write it down, Turam, etc. Go crazy. And we see each other for the post-game of Juventus Monza because that's what we have to think about. Watching our boys for last time, 23-24. Grazie, forza. Juve. <claps>